Well, hello and welcome to Talking Music, where every song has a story. My name is Paul, and over the next few minutes, we'll be getting behind the story of a well-known song, the facts, the information, and the odd secret or two. And the song we're featuring today is one of the real big ones. It's John Lennon and the Plastic Ono Band and Imagine, to give it its full credit. It's the piano ballad that has become arguably the most famous song in the world. And it took only a morning to write. John Lennon composed it on a Steinway piano in a bedroom at his Tittenhurst Park estate in Ascot, Berkshire, not far from London, in early 1971. Yoko Ono was there, encouraging, advising, suggesting, as he finished the song in a short writing session. In May of that year, the song was co-produced by Phil Spector, at Lennon's home studios, and then the tapes were brought back to New York by Phil Spector for final tweaks and adjustments. In October, the song was the first single to be released from the Imagine album, which was John's second studio album, which went on to top the British and American album charts. A lot has been said of Phil Spector's producing style, John himself has said that Phil doesn't really arrange anything. Both he and Yoko just sit in another room and shout out comments like, try this, try that, or you're not playing the piano well enough. Phil has said he knew John was going to make a political statement with this song, albeit a commercial one, and he wanted Imagine to be like a national anthem. The sound was simple. A piano, a voice, a little percussion. That's what was recorded at John's house. In New York, Phil Spector added some light string overdubs. The famous white piano in the white room of John's house was initially used, but the acoustics didn't work. The white room and the white piano did make it onto the video, though. The imagined concept came from Yoko Ono and her book Grapefruit, published in 1964. It was a book of imaginings. Imagine a goldfish swimming across the sky. Imagine yourself crying and using the tears to make yourself stronger. The book was reissued again at the time of Imagine, and it was Yoko's open-mindedness, allowing her imagination to just wonder, that inspired John to write Imagine, a song deconstructing society, the way we live, and what we know. He was asking us to imagine a place where the things that divide us, religion, possessions, barriers and borders, did not exist. He believed that world would be a better place. In a way, it was a musical counterpart to Yoko's grapefruit. Imagine there was a time, you know, when you didn't have to have a passport to go from country to country. It used to be you could go around, you know. What is this game that somehow this is America and then just across the, the field is Canada and that you have to have all kinds of papers and pictures and stamps and passports and the concept of imagining no countries, imagining no religion, not imagining no God, although you're entitled to do that too. Imagining no denominations, imagining that we revere Jesus Christ, Mohammed, Krishna, Milarepa, Equally, we don't have to worship either one that we don't have to, but imagine there's no Catholic Protestant, no Jew Christian, that we allow it all, freedom of religion for real. John never thought this could actually happen. Unity, equality would have to be built upon the complete destruction of modern social order. John had called Imagine a virtual communist manifesto with no religion, no country, no more politics, just one world one people. It's a fantasy, and some might say, depending on their politics, an idealism. But in reality, how could it ever happen? The song has a political message, but it is style over substance. And that's very probably its appeal, because what really comes through is the song's humanity. The video is very two-tone, it's black and white, and any colour that does emerge stands out in contrast. You've got the greenery of the garden. You've got John's yellow lenses in his spectacles. The house is white. The room is white, including piano. Yoko is dressed in white with a white headband. As a video, 
It was advanced for its time, but again like the song, very simple. A slow walk into the house, Yoko drawing back the curtains, letting light into the room, and John sat at the piano, singing the words, which, if enacted, could let light into the world. The recognition the song got was immense. Rolling Stone described Imagine as John Lennon's greatest gift to the world. Beatles producer George Martin said Imagine was his favourite song of all. But what would a song be without its critics? It sounds like a church hymn, but the singer is asking us to renounce religion. Its politics would leave the world in a state of emergency and chaos. You get the drift. Its accolades through time, though, are impressive. One of the most covered and performed songs of the 20th century. In the top 30 songs of the century. In the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame of songs that shape music. And on National Poetry Day in 1999 in the UK, it was the winner of the BBC's Top Lyric of the Century. And it's been ranked by various surveys over the years as consistently being in the top 10 favourite or best songs of all time. Even during the coronavirus year of 2020, the actress Gal Gadot posted an informal but star-studded cover version of Imagine on Instagram to raise morale though the performance, in truth, was poorly received by audiences who thought the message of the song was to eliminate haves and have-nots, but it was performed by a group of socialites and elites. Released in 1971 in America, it wasn't released in the UK until 1975, which was a mystery to John as to why, but in an interview from 1980, just a few days before his death, he revealed an exclusive about Yoko's involvement with the song. Well, I must say I'm blank on why that would have happened. It must have been either because Klein and EMI or whoever was... Decided that maybe it's a bit too that, political. That too political or whatever reasoning they had for him, because it was a single in America. I think it was something to do with they wanted to sell the album, so make them buy the album to get him out. Some garbage like that. It surprised me. Actually, that should be credited as a Lennon Ono song, mm -hmm. because a lot of mm -hmm. it, the lyric and the concept came from Yoko, but those days I was a bit more selfish, a bit more macho, and I sort of omitted to mention her contribution. Oh, but it was right out of Grapefruit, her book. There's a whole pile of pieces about imagine this and imagine that and give her credit now, long overdue. We just inspired each other. Yeah, but if it had been Bowie, I would have put Lennon Bowie. So if it had been a male, you know, when we wrote Fame together, Harry Nielsen, Old Dirt Road, is Lennon Nielsen. But when we did it, I just put Lennon because, you know, she's just the wife and you don't put her name on, right? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. yes. So let's have a look at the charts to see how it fared. The American chart, firstly, this was the only time it was ever released in America. And as you can see, it peaked at number three in November 1971. It wasn't released in the UK at this time, but it was released some four years later, November 1975. Then it hit a peak of number six on the UK charts. But in January of 1981, when it was released as a tribute to John after his shooting, it went straight to number one. There you can see January 1981. He was number one and number two in the charts. And curiously enough, it wasn't released in the US on this occasion as a tribute to John, because the record label in America were concentrating on woman and just like starting over. And then in December of 1999, at the turn of a new century, it was deemed a good idea to reissue Imagine as a one world anthem for the new millennium. And it did well, straight into the charts at number three on the 19th of December, 1999. It's John's best ever selling solo single. He's had bigger hits with the Beatles, but uh, as a solo single, this was his biggest. 1.65 million in sales in the UK alone, putting it firmly in the UK top 30 bestsellers ever. And the single went gold in America on its first release back in 1971, so a minimum of one million record sales there. So estimated world record sales for the single, around three and a half million copies. One or two interesting facts on the song. The Steinway piano John Lennon composed Imagine On was subsequently bought by George Michael for $2 million in 2000, and with George's generosity was donated to the Beatles Museum in Liverpool. But it's the 
white grand piano that will forever be associated with the song because it was featured in the video. And the song features in the big Hollywood blockbuster Forrest Gump, where Gump appears on a talk show and talks about no possessions and no religion. And over 200 artists have recorded this song, including Madonna, Stevie Wonder, Randy Crawford, Dinah Ross, Lady Gaga and Elton John. So now we know from John's final interview that Yoko Ono has a songwriting credit for Imagine. And this was endorsed by the NMPA, the National Music Publishers Association, in 2017, recognising not only the song, but Yoko too. So I know that we promised a special moment for the end of the show. For the first time, in addition to honouring a songwriter icon, Pharrell, we're going to honour an actual song. We thought it was appropriate on our centennial and we're calling it our Centennial Song Award. And so it is with great pleasure that we are presenting this NMPA Centennial Song Award to the song Imagine. And we are so honored that here to accept this award is Yoko Ono and Sean Lennon. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> this is the best time of my life. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's so good. And I love the fact that uh, Sean and I are together. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so surprised that Sean created his own niche. <laughs> Let's not talk about me, Mum. <laughs> but thank you very much. She's my only fan. <laughs> I just wanted to say that um, when music and art were valued by the school systems along with math and science, I think it's the whole world that benefited. And even my father learned a lot in art college. Not many people think about that, but he did actually. And so let's not let any generation be denied the opportunity of letting those parts of their imaginations thrive, okay? Thank you. So, so in addition to this surprise for all of you, we actually also have a surprise for Yoko and Sean. So please take a moment and listen to an archived recording that John Lennon made about the song Imagine from 1980. Surprise me. Actually, that should be credited as a Lennon Ono song mm -hmm. because a lot of the, the lyric and the concept came from Yoko, but those days I was a bit more selfish, a bit more macho, and I sort of omitted to mention her contribution, oh, yeah. but it was right out of Grapefruit, her book. There's a whole pile of pieces about imagine this and imagine that, and give her credit now long overdue. While, while things may have been different in 1971, today I'm very glad to say that things have changed. And so tonight, it is my distinct honor to correct the record some 48 years later and officially recognize Yoko Ono as a co-writer of the NMPA centennial song Imagine and present her with her own award for this. It's such a simple song. Simple words, simple melody, simple production. And yet again, an example in life of how sometimes simplicity can be a most powerful force. John Lennon and Imagine. And that's it for another Talking Music where every song has a story. Please do subscribe by clicking the subscribe button on the video and you'll be able to peruse all the other songs that we've featured on this channel where we get behind the song with facts, information, stories and secrets. So please do subscribe. It's absolutely free, of course. So till next time and the next video, I wish you well.